Hey everybody, how's it going? I've been getting a lot of questions on how I built my turning rack and if I have any plans for them. I don't have any written plans, um, so I'm putting together this video to give you guys a little step-by-step -step on how I built it. It was really quick and easy to do, it was inexpensive, and I think it works pretty well. So I'll go ahead and take it off the wall, we'll put it over here on my table saw, and I'll give you a little rundown, step-by-step, -step of um, what it took to build this. and. Uh, I'll kind of add as many links in the description as I can to uh, kind of guide you guys along. So um, let's get started. So here's the cage portion of it. Um, it's really the meat and potatoes of the rack. It's uh, very easy to put together. It just consists of these two pre-made rounds. I had cut these spokes out and, and it really hollowed out most of the, uh, the meat of it just to lose weight and also just to kind of give it a, a, a spoke wheel look. Uh, but it's unnecessary, but I'll show you how I did that. It also consists of uh, four wooden dowels, a rotisserie uh, skewer with a threaded end, and 20 of these squeeze clamps. It's really easy to put together. There's not a lot to it, uh, but I'll go ahead and start by showing you um, about these, these rounds. This is a 17 and 3 quarter inch prefabricated round I purchased from Home Depot. I don't remember exactly how much I paid for it off the top of my head. I'll look on their website and see if I can find it and I'll put a link in the description. But the most important part of this process is finding the dead center of it um, just to make sure everything is perfectly balanced. If you're not familiar with how to find the dead center of a circle, um, it's a pretty easy process. All you need to do is take a straight edge. I like to use these uh, longer um, squares. And you're gonna draw a line from one side to the other. And it doesn't matter where on the circle you do this, um, as long as your line touches two points on the perimeter of the circle. This is a 17 inch line, so I'm gonna find the midway point and mark out eight and a half. So then I'm going to take the square, line it up with that line, and I'm going to draw another line from there to the perimeter, and then making sure that these are going to be 90 degrees. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do it again, and it doesn't matter where, again, I'm going to do a 10 inch line, marking the midway point, which is going to be 5 inches. Taking the square again and drawing a line out from the midway point at 90 degrees again to the other side of the circle. Now these two lines that you just drew off of your cords are going to intersect at the midway point. So if I were to do that again, so let's make a line from here to say here which is going to be a 12 inch line and mark the midway point at 6 inches and again at 90 degrees draw a line at 90 degrees out from that cord out to the other side of the circle again it's going to intersect exactly at your midway point now that I found my midway point, what I'm going to do is mark out from the edge one and a half inches and I'm going to take a compass, I'm going to draw an interior circle whose midway point should be centered right in the middle of the round. Now that will give you a perfect perimeter. Now what I'm going to do is take a straight edge, put it right on the center. So uh, it's going to, this side of the piece of wood is going to represent the diameter. And I'm going to trace a line on the outside and then put it on the other side of the diameter and draw another line. Now these lines are going to represent my spokes. So now at 90 degrees, I'm not going to measure it out, but uh, if you're going to, if you're trying to keep this balance, I would recommend measuring 90 degrees right here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Draw another diameter, mark the outside, line the wood up on the opposite side of the diameter again, draw another line. So now what you've done is you have traced out all of the areas 
that you're going to cut out. So I would drill a hole here, 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 and here, and basically cut out all of this material right here. Once you have all this drawn out, which is really is the most time consuming part of this process, um, the drilling, the cutting out, where I took it over to my router table and put a round over bit and smoothed over all of the edges uh, just to kind of give it more of a finished look. But once you have that all done, you're, you're totally done with uh, cutting out the wheel. From this point, what you're gonna do is mark locations on the perimeter along those diameters and you're gonna want them to be the same distance from the edge. Now I would measure this out, obviously I'm not doing that. And I would take a Forstner bit and a drill press and I would drill these out for the same diameter of your wooden dowels and I chose three quarters. I just wanted three quarters because they're sturdy. Uh, it'll give the whole cage a little more rigidity um, and uh, so you could take this over to your drill press and hog these out uh, at the same depth. That's why I like the drill press for this part of the process. You want these all to be the same exact depth as one another. Um, if you're doing it by hand you could always make a mark on your drill bit um, or your Forstner bit uh, just to kind of eyeball and make sure these are all at the same depths. Um, but really a drill press is just the best tool for this part of the job. Once your wheels are complete and you have your rod holes all drilled out, um, it's just as simple as cutting your four dowels to an equal size and gluing them in place, clamping the whole thing together. Just kind of make sure everything stays square while you're clamping and gluing up. Um, and then you're basically done. I drilled out a hole for the center rod to go through. This is a square rotisserie rod. So all I really did was took a drill bit that was just a little smaller than the rod and I drilled out the two holes on the sides and I drove the rod through. It's a square rod through a round hole so it's basically just a friction fit but it's a, it's a pretty tight fit. It took quite a bit of uh, pounding to get that all the way through um, but once it's in it's, uh, it's going to stay in place and there's not going to be any slop there whatsoever. Once you have this whole assembly complete, you're basically ready to install these clamps. And really what I did was I took the rubber coat coating off. Let's see if I can get one of these off for you. I took my drill with a metal bit and I drilled a hole right through the handle of this clamp. And then I put the rubber back on. I set it on the rod and I basically just tacked it on with a, a screw, light pressure, uh, didn't really bother with any um, drilling any holes beforehand, just screwed it right into the, the dowel, didn't really deal with a whole lot of splitting on the dowel. You might want to do a pilot hole, but that's up to you. I didn't really feel the need for it. Um, plus this kind of gives you a little tighter fit so these aren't too wobbly. You can move them from side to side a little bit. Um, but you kind of want to keep these as tight as possible because if you're turning a larger lure, the, just the weight from the lure could you know, convince these to shift off to, to a side. So as tight as you can get them, that's how I like to uh, install these clamps. The mounting part of the process was fairly simple. Um, I'm working in a garage that has open walls, so I have access to the studs. So I basically just took two by sixes and drilled them right to the studs. I did use a spacer on this side because of the width of the cage that I made um, needed to be, you know, right in between these two studs. So um, I did use a spacer on that side, and I just leveled it out, clamped them on, and then just screwed them right into the studs. If you don't have access to studs, then you're going to need to build some sort of stand. Um, but just keep in mind when you're turning a larger lure that it's going to uh, stick out a little bit. Make sure you have enough room um, behind it and below it um, so your, your lures aren't going to be hitting the walls or the floor or whatever you have it mounted to. This is the uh, motor that I purchased. It's by Only Fire. I'll put the link in the description as well. Um, it came with uh, just the motor 
and a little bracket that I uh, mounted to uh, this stud here. I opened up the top of this 2x6 um, so when I insert the rod in through this hole here that it would just drop down and the motor would just sit right uh, slide right onto the provided bracket. So the rod that came with the motor has threads on the end so basically all I did is went to the hardware store with the rod and I found this expansion nut with the, the same threads on the inside and basically all you have to do is uh, insert it over the threads and screw it on until the expansion nut meets the wheel and then I found uh, a ball bearing with an inside diameter uh, that equals um, this diameter on the expansion nut and so that just slides right onto there and on the post that you're going to mount this to all you have to do is measure the diameter of this ball bearing and drill a hole through that stud and insert this ball bearing into that hole so once that's seated all you have to do is put this uh, rubber into the ball bearing and uh, everything will spin nice and free. So to mount it back in place all I have to do is take the ball bearing and insert it back into the hole. Now if you measured everything out it should be kind of a snug fit but all I need to do is lift the cage into place and I'm going to slide the motor onto the provided bracket I'm going to bend out the stud and insert that rod into the ball bearing. Plug it in and it's good to go. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope it helps you. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me, uh, comment on this video, or um, just give me an email. Thanks. Have a good one.